गुड मॉर्निंग मिस्टर रवि पांडे हेलो ऑडी बोल रही गुड मॉर्निंग मिस्टर रवि यू आर म्यूटेड आई थिंक सर विल स्टार्ट द सेशन इन फाइव मिनट्स पार्टिसिपेंट्स आर जॉइनिंग द सेशन हेलो am i audible yes yes you are audible sir good morning good morning good morning and welcome for uh, today's session organized by isc dy patil pharmacy college pune sure sir hello so dr ravind uh, uh, when can we start so we'll start in uh, next 5 minutes okay so as discussed earlier we have uh, uh, mr siddhant shivastav he sure. has been a serial product developer he has several patent applications on his name great, and is the founder of a startup as well and has several fellowships on his name great sir so what i have done is on the hardware side uh, siddhant would be taking the first part the okay. first 30 minutes okay. and the next 30 minutes i will be talking about something about the uh, trl of scale transition ip part regulatory and compliances so these are the four points that i will be talking okay okay fine sir uh, welcome mr siddhant thank you sir yes uh, the audience for uh, third year student fourth year student uh, the audience most of the students are the students Uh, they are graduate and postgraduate students, and uh, there are also faculties who are from pharmacy background. Ma'am, we can start. Ah, uh, sure, sir. Uh, Dr. Ravindra, when you are ready uh, during the introduction, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Siddhant. Yes. As he is a very enthusiastic uh, student at our esteemed institution. So kindly allow me the opportunity for this. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Uh, 
very good morning uh, to all of, all the participants of today's session on behalf of institutions innovation council dr dy patel institute of pharmaceutical sciences and research pimpri pune i welcome all the faculties as well as student participant of this session uh, the session is on the topic prototype process design and development prototyping and today we have a speaker mr ravi pande research establishment officer innovation and incubation sidbi innovation and incubation center iit kanpur uh, so i request dr vinita patore ma'am to uh, introduce the today's speaker good morning sir and good morning all the delegates hey, they... it gives me immense it gives me immense pleasure to welcome mr ravi pande guest speaker for the day mr ravi is research establishment officer SIDBI Innovation and Incubation Center, Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur. Sir is currently heading the IP and Technology Transfer Cell of IIT Kanpur. He has ten plus years of experience in IPR management, technology licensing, commercialization, product design, development, and policy development. He has formulated the technology transfer policy, faculty entrepreneurship policy, start. student entrepreneurship policy of iit kanpur he has worked as advisor on innovation and incubation related matters for iit jammu jharkhand government samrat ashok Te technological institute vidisha kanpur university and rajkiya engineering college banda up one of the technology transfer transaction facilitated by him has been awarded impactful technology transfer award by stem also awarded outstanding participation award by startup india for promotion of innovation related activities and master trainer award by european patent office he has facilitated substantial growth in the innovation ecosystem by formulating policy framework and modifying operational modalities he has facilitated the highest number of technology transfer transaction with steep growth in licensing renewance at iit kanpur with this brief introduction i may now request sir to start over the session over to you sir thank you thank you so much uh, dr vinita uh, patole for giving my introduction thank but you. this introduction is not complete from the uh, speaker's perspective uh, today i have already requested one of the uh, very uh, serial product designer and developer here at iit kanpur mr siddhan shrivastava so before proceeding ahead as this today's presentation has been divided into two parts i would like to introduce mr siddhan shrivastava so uh, mr siddhan shrivastava holds a btech and a mtech and is currently pursuing phd in design at iit kanpur uh, he has to my best of my, my knowledge he has more than 10 patent application on applications on his name uh, he has been awarded the most uh, renowned uh, 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 fellowship and grant application to name a few he has been awarded nidhi prayas plus bioignition grant by bayrak which has been the most competitive plus few others not only that he is also a founder of a startup company and uh, uh, he has developed several products i do not want to uh, break the sus suspense right now because he already has a presentation which is going to share from the product development perspective we worked together collaboratively collaboratively for a, a project which was nasal uh, breathing filter wherein we went till the uh, uh, validation phase where the testing of the filter or the prototype was done so we went till the trl 6 and 7 so mr siddhant is going to present on the product development design prototyping as he is the expert for the next 30 30 to 40 minutes later on i will be coming to cover up the other points related to regulatory compliances trl upscaling and ips so i request mr siddhant to kindly come on stage and grace the audience with your knowledge thank you sir for the kind introduction i just want to add one point ravi sir is actually all inspiration for us he promote us everything every time we have a patent we have we go to him he, he just consults us ki kya karna hai kya nahi karna and give us advice and uh, yes definitely he is actually a inspiration to all of us so from that note i will start the presentation uh, just give me an access just one second yes uh, you can share your screen sir just, just one second 
Uh, maybe my screen is visible. Yes, yes. Okay. Hello to all. Uh, myself, Siddhan Shivastava. Actually, uh, today I will just discuss about the basic prototyping methods that what we should do, what how we should do, and what are the basic principles of prototyping that the student must use to evaluate to or, or to make some products. So uh, I we know that the the second year, third year, even the professors were there. So I will. Uh, make the lecture a small complex because uh, I should not include small, small things. I will include a complex thing, which will really help you a lot. So for, first I will go to a design thinking approach that what the basic approach you all must follow. Then with, uh, from that, I will go to a product fidelities. What are the fidelities? What are the product prototypes, various types of prototypes, how you should make, how, uh, what are the fidelity, high fidelity, low fidelity, medium fidelity prototyping, what is concept modeling and other. So I will uh, make the lecture uh, for half an hour because Ravishar also want to give a lecture. So I will just make a small uh, note to that the 30 minutes is a time for me. So I'll start with the first step of design thinking is a very good approach we, which we all must use. I will give a small one page slider of that what is design thinking. So everyone should know that what is what they must think of before designing any product. The first step is empathy study. I want to give an example. Suppose you want to design a product. So you all uh, belong to a pharmaceutical sector. Suppose you want to uh, design a drug, drug to someone so for, a, for a patient or for a doctor. Doctor has some problem, you want to design a drug. First, you need to go and understand what the basic problem is that. What's the problem they are going through? This is the first step or that is empathy. And that is develop a deep understanding of the challenge. This is a, one of the most important steps in designing anything, any product, any uh, device, any concept, which is the most important thing. Because you must first understand what others are thinking and what you must actually think from their perspective. This is very important. If you have done this study well, then you have done half of the part of your product designing or prototyping. The first is that develop a deep understanding of the challenge that what exactly they want. And second step is that define that problem. Once you understand a problem, this is a problem that I want to solve. I want to cater. These are, these are the, these are the uh, basic parameters that I want to be make the prototype. Then you must define that right? these are the limitations of fine. These are the product between to design. This is the ultimate outcome of the product. That is why second step is, it is to articulate the problem you want to solve. Believe me, these two steps are the most important in designing any product. I want to give an example of suppose Ola, Ola or Uber, Uber cabs. First, they have understand the problem that today in the Indian scenario that uh, people are don't want to go on auto rickshaws or they are finding difficulties in booking auto rickshaw. They have to call the auto rickshaw driver and they come. So they develop an app application, basically a mobile application, which how they can, we can book a cab, uh, primarily of car, and today auto section, auto and bikes are also included. But they've developed a problem. This is a problem that people are facing. That is empathize about the people that this is the currently the current scenario of India. They need to be developed. They need to be uh, want to live a posh life for two hours or a few minutes by, while driving a car, uh, while driving in a, a, a summer season in an AC car. So they want that people want more comfort. This is the first empathy study that they have done. Second, they have defined that how they can articulate the problem of that what problem people are saving into a defined objective that this is the objective they want to achieve. These are the two major, if we can find these two things, we have we are near halfway. The third is that ideate, that what to do. This is our statement, this is our definition, this is what you need to do. Like how to do is need to ideate. But this is also very important step. In our practical classes, we do brainstorm sessions, imagine shortlist, develop solutions. But in an online session like this, I will just give a small brief that uh, just blend yourself n number of ideas that what can, how and what can you, how can you achieve your goal. After that, you will get n number of random ideas, even the, uh, some, some thoughts were not even possible, but you must write that idea. Even, because, even the small ideation can lead up to a very good, good product. So first is that ideate that problem. 
it is brainstorm formulate a team gather more and more interviews this is a, this and take more and more ideas and just target how you can achieve that because a single idea can change a world is actually a very uh, is, is a special quote for me because a small idea can change a world because uh, take an example of mobile it's a very small idea and initially this is we can talk mobile uh, and to provide a mobility to a person a very small idea but today it's a boon okay just imagine brainstorm imagine shortlist and develop a solution and this is ideation the fourth step is that prototype this is actually what we are uh, what we cover today prototyping session uh, so first is that these are the three steps that we have covered the fourth step is that how the product should look if you are working on mobile application that how the product should look in the mobile if you are working on a product base how a product should look in on the real life so you must define this is and define various fidelity prototypes to achieve the solution and solve the problem this is actually major part which we will cover today and the last stage is that testing after delivering the product after getting the product we must test it get the required feedback so this is a very iterative process because after testing maybe you got that the solution is very very bad or the solution is not even possible so again you need to define ideate prototype testing but if you have done the empathy in the define stage very properly and very cautiously you should only roaming on these three step that is again prototype and testing prototype and testing for achieving your product these are the five steps we that we must this is a basic design thinking approach so in the last section i also give a small exercise to you that what you must do because it's a practical thinking ability that you must applied in your real life so this uh, this is how actually you will learn not only by this lecture you should apply this the second is that uh, yes i want to give some innovative product that what how and you must think that to give a comfort to the user the first is that like the carpenter they need to hold the nut bolt or the screw so, so the the small gripper which can be easily uh, by magnetic gripper which can easily stuck or uh, hold the screw the second is that this rubik cube this rubik cube is made for blinds just this is a desk kit actually this is developed from my it kanpur one of my seniors has made it has inbuilt desk in this these are some innovative products that you must think that what's the perspective of us before thinking of before creating anything this self steering mug that we must do that this is actually a heating knife that can be easily used for, to take butter these are the bio toilets these are this is actually real innovation that currently we in india most of the trains are equipped with bio toilets today there is uh, uh, previously what happens we all know that there is the toilets were open to the nearby rails near bottom rails and all the waste go to the rails so currently bio toilets are the state of art in uh, railway they are just collected and accumulated and later collected and just for dispose of so this is actually a idea that what you should think you should think a daily life problem that that can be used and that can be uh, used by more more of the people most and most and that must be simple uh, something like that that it can simplify their work like this is uh, also a very good uh, water bottle is created instead of carrying a whole bottle you can just eat a bottle and it acts like a water it's, it's a water fill inside it we can easily eat now is there a consumable water that we have someone has created or someone has thought of and made that this is actually basically portable typewriter a small sensor which which creates a infrared typewriter we can type anywhere we can get a type a keyboard and we can type same is that uh, basically this is actually a uh, drinking straw it's basically a a uh, combination of various filters and it is equipped in that the filter that we can easily drop and eat and drink these are some innovated products i really want to know that this this is the perspective you must think on because currently the the current scenario is that people want more innovative and more customized product and this is the perspective we must think on for creating anything so starting with the first thing is that what is today's lecture is a conceptual modeling and prototyping we all know conceptual model is uh, is a representation of a system made of the concepts composition of concepts which is used to follow know understand and stimulate the objects to model represent this is actually a first definition i really want to add this that let know understand and simulate the model this is actually very important if you understand this problem the whole lecture you will understand because the only thing is that if prototyping in prototyping what happens if someone give you a problem if you can cater a small product prototype to them 
by just to know them what is the problem this is the understanding that they can get this is a simulation or the small working that they can you can show it to you and this is a small model that you can show to them this is more than enough after that you will get some feedback you can iterate the process and ultimately lead to a final product this basically uh, start from the conception or generation of process a very small example of uh, uh, some models of physical objects like toy models toy models i want to give an example of lego bricks you can use lego bricks to create n number of things it's a very small unit but it's which can we can use n number of objects from that so by this we can make we can we create thinking of something like that at which can be assemble or second and uh, one of the most important thing in prototyping is that designer should consider system service and product in a relation to what they should do how they should behave what they look like and whether they will be understood by the users in the manner intended if you can do this then you will become a product designer basically so this is very important thing that what they should do how they should behave the prototype how they should look like and whether they will be understood by the users in the manner intended so this is basically a conceptual modeling that we must uh, uh, go through i want to give a few examples because i really want to make it as sweet as small as possible there are some sketches that is it's called flow chart of concept modeling of american flickr this is a flickr app first they have made the, the, the this concept modeling that how their app should work you can easily imagine with the flipkart or amazon or any other uh, uh, app that you use this is actually a flickr this is actually a flow chart that they they made earlier before creating any model this is very important in terms of digital products in case of physical product this graphical sketches first what we do we do sketches before sketching what why we do because it's a very cheap process we don't involve a pen and a pencil and a paper we do n number of iterations in that and ultimately we can see the what the solution is exactly looking like and after that we can create our physical prototype these are the two important things that flow chart for digital digital product and graphical conceptual modeling for physical product and these are the some prototypes like as you can see this is a computer rendering okay this is a computer rendering which looks like a real product this is actually art architecture artifacts which uh, i have used here so this by this we can get the actual idea of the product that this is the how the product should look like this is a small prototype of a, of a small scale model of a composite uh, material uh, which they are testing on so what we have done we have also scaled down the product this also we have uh, this does not cost us much but gives an actual look actual phenom actual uh, user defined look that this is how it should look this is how it should the strength of and one more important thing that suppose this is uh, this uh, i would advise you that suppose you want to create a big house or a big uh, wall of composite walls by creating this small product or a small scale model is similar to prototype we can also test the ergonomical or the strength behavior of that So this is very important for uh, for engineering point of view. If you want to engineer something, uh, architectural point of view, if you want to architecture something, it's very important. Important small small things that we must consider on. So first thing is that designer use physical model to visualize information about the context the model represents. So visualization is very important for a product designer. First, you must visualize that what exactly it is. After that, we must either i we have thought of something it can be very big like a fighter jet or it can be very small like a rubber but we must have to a uh, model of scale down and smaller objects which can be done and scaling up for smaller objects which can be easily done so we must have a visualization of that what we are uh, catering to the uh, user uh, the primary goal is that that primary goal of physical modeling is to test expert of product against user requirements user have given us some requirements if we can fulfill their requirement the best thing is that why prototype we can uh, we can get from the third thing is that we can get an appropriate product is the, uh, by test we can do a small testing and after testing we can get a feedback from that and after feedback we can easily evaluate because prototyping does not cost us much we can easily iterate we can easily assemble some uh, some a uh, cardboard paper anything we can easily collect and we can easily make by this the user has some idea that what exactly you have done 
they can easily give you an idea that how we can iterate the product, how we can modify the product. There are also various categories of prototyping that is low fidelity prototyping, medium fidelity, which we'll cover in the next, next section. So getting feedback is very, very important. So by prototyping, it will reduce the costing also and also reduce the effort. This is basically a physical modeling. So there were basically three approaches that uh, the users, uh, the product designer should use for creating anything. That is first is throw away. This is a very strong statement is throw away because you should not love your prototype. This is a very important statement. Prototype is only, uh, or only make to throw away. Okay, prototype because we should not love our product. Prototype are created only to throw away. We have to make an original or the final product. So initial prototype is used for only to throw. There's nothing much utility that we can get. So you should not love that. So prototype only serves elicit user reaction. Prototype prototype must be rapid. Otherwise, it is too expensive. If you are taking much much time only to creating prototype, it's not a prototype. You are only wasting your time. So these are the two important things that uh, elicit user reaction and it must be rapid. And it already, we know that we need to throw our prototype. So don't love your prototype. This is a very important statement that you must understand in the initial stage. Second is incremental. Today, the model concept is very, very common. People want a modeler because once, uh, once part is missing or once part malfunction, we can easily repair that and we can easily replace that part. So today, uh, uh, modularity is very, very common. So product built as separate component is very, very common in today's date. Today's date, that you must think on that. Each component prototype and tested, they added to the final system. So by you by taking a baby step, ultimately we reach to the goal. So each component prototype and tested, then added to the final system. This is the second incremental way that currently the state of art. These are the, the third state of art is that evolutionary. Product alter to incorporate design changes. That is, you must create a product that is ready to accept more and more changes. You should not give a finalization of a product. This is a, that what we have created. That the product must have, have the ability to change or ability to modify after the feedback. Eventually, it becomes a final product. By applying all these three steps, this is a current step that everyone should follow. We ultimately reach to a final product. This is an iterative process and always you must understand that that this is a state of art throw away incremental and evolutionary if you want to uh, create product in today's scenario this these uh, three integration steps you must follow like like an example of scale down models this is an aeroplane model we can't create a prototype of a full scale aeroplane so we have scaled down so we for a small prototype that how actually it looks by this the user can get the idea the actual aeroplane is the second is DNA. DNA is very, very small. We all belong to pharmaceutical uh, section. We know that DNA is very, very small. So we have a scale of model that how a DNA actually looks. Yeah, there are a few concepts that we must learn on that. How to scale, how to scale down. The third is that uh, this is a very important thing in concept models and aesthetic models that we generally see concept cars, concept bikes. What are they and how, how people can think of that? So concept cars and concept modeling are basically just an outer appearance which looks and feel like a final product. It can even non-operate or non-function. So it's a very common saying today, concept car, concept bikes, concept houses, uh, smart houses, very, very things are concept. That is, they're only to show and look, feels like final product. They, they can, uh, may be or may not working, but they should look and feel like a final product. So this, as we can see, uh, the recent uh, launch of Avinkia, the uh, electric car from Tata, this is a concept car. The internal arrangement circuitry may be not that, uh, may be appropriate to function like a electric or a uh, autonomous car, but it also only shows a corporate uh, outer frames and outer body that how, this is how actually it looks. This is a concept bike. Maybe you haven't seen any bike like this. But this is a concept. It gives the user or the product designer the imagination that they can use to create anything. This is basically imagination power of a product designer. The same thing, they can be used by either clay or cardboard or 
And I think Andy Ruff model can be used to create these type of models. They have that form, color, style, texture, and how the product fits in the visual environment. So this is actually only for aesthetic and body appealing. So this, this you must consider before creating anything. Uh, they can be used for ergonomic testing, visual appealing, and non-designer to see the how the feel real how the real products will be. So this is concept models work. The next section, uh, th these are various levels of fidelity. This is very important, actually. This you must understand what are the fidelity. Uh, fidelity, ba fidelity basically means that what you have created initially and what is the version of your prototype. Suppose we have got an idea, we want a smaller, uh, uh, smaller version of prototype. You create a first fidelity that is called low fidelity product. Fidelity three different are uh, are not really tangible. It's basically a paper prototype that you can create. You can offer input to a design idea. Suppose uh, you have a pen and a paper, you can gather some idea, you can sketch something, and you can easily make that low fidelity prototype. This is basically a pen paper base. It can, does not contain much information, but given a small idea to the user. Second is middle fidelity. This is basically a small mock-up with a limited functionality. I will definitely give some examples to you with what exactly they are. This, uh, this is the medium fidelity. That is a small, the same idea that we can cater to a user with a small functionality. The third is that high fidelity. Uh, this is a full scale working prototype. They are tangible and testable. This can be given to the user for testing and allows user interaction. So these are three important things, low fidelity, medium fidelity, and high fidelity that uh, you must understand this. As starting with, you must start with the low fidelity. Suppose it can, why low fidelity, we can incorporate maximum number of changes, but after going to medium fidelity, we, the uh, number of changes can must be reduced and high fidelity, the changes will be very, very less. So this is actually, this is the advantage of, we can change n number of things after testing and feedback, we can change a small number of things and the high fidelity, we, we should not change much because it, it consumes cost and also time. So the early design, as we can see, uh, different type of products when we must use, this is the early design, choose a representation throughout interface uh, style, task, walkthrough, and redesign. This is the first step where you must do. Second is that medium fidelity prototype. It is fine-tuned interface, screen design, a heuristic evaluation, and redesign. This is a second fidelity that we must use. And high fidelity is that usability testing and redesign and limited field testing. And after that, there will be alpha and a beta test. And after that, there will be a finalization of the product. This is a uh, basically a lineup for any product design from starting from low to the final design. So uh, there are some examples of low fidelity. As you can see, they have used a small pen and paper and just formalized of what is, uh, suppose you want to design an app. So you want to design a screensaver or want to design something digitally. What you can do, you can use a small paper, uh, cut a cardboard like in this shape and uh, give a small uh, notations of these, like these lines, figures. This will show a graphical interface of your application. So basically it's meant to throw, quick and build, easy to throw away purposes. It is basically a proof of concept. It is flexible. We can easily communicate our ideas. And easily, this is very cheap. This does not require much. Uh, we can easily create with a small time. We can easily get feedback. Also, it's a very less effort. So changes can be easily made. So these are some low fidelity prototypes that we must uh, gather initially. As an example, like this, like this mobile app. This is a small mobile frame. This is a movable paper. So we can move the paper to see the next, next screen, what is coming, next screen, what is coming. So by this, we can also change the screen. We can also see the show, show the uh, interface that what currently the interface must be. Like this is a game, as we all know, can, uh, the uh, many games like this have made so this, uh, how we can show the user that this is how we can create the user interface. Suppose user don't like that, you can easily change that. So it's a low fidelity, uh, low fi basically what we call low fi prototyping. Uh, other examples like, like mood boards that we must create or uh, indicator and diagram that you must create. So suppose uh, get uh, suppose this is an example that how we can make a tea or how we can uh, bake a cake. It's a small example. So by this we can get the user. This this is actually what you want to create. They can get an idea. They can give a small feedback to that. Second is medium fidelity prototyping. Uh, basically uh, we need a. I will show the example. This is actually medium fidelity prototyping. As we can see, there are small like blue stick and clipping.
thing we have used to showcase the basic functionality, basic images of the how the product should look like. After that, we can easily impose that. Uh, we can handle to the user that is actually this how should design should look like, and we can easily cater a good design after that because this is actually a functionality that how it should function and how should it look like. And after testing, we can easily come to this after final testing. This is a medium fidelity prototype. That is, we have given a ten, small tangible out, uh, input to the user. So basically, it what is uh, it has clinical areas. We can interact. We can navigate, and small small things we can do. We can easily engage our users. We can simulate. We should not simulate all features, but we can give small small features to the user that this is actually what we want to do. These are all example of remote controls. This actually is a small set of remote control that how we should use. This is this is a small example like three uh, crayons they have used in the uh, dust trucks to create a small uh, remote control system to uh, to just show the basic outer structure and to show the basic functionality of the uh, uh, product that they want to create. Then this is a small uh, small example that we must think of before creating any big thing. Last one is high fidelity prototyping. Basically, I will show the first example. Then I will show. This is actually high fidelity prototype. As we can see, the user has created a basic interface at how it should look. The user can easily use that. I can easily drag that. I can easily drag that. I can easily use that, and I can get the actual feel of actual app that I'm working with. Maybe it's not even launched, but I can get the exact feel of that. So this requires time and requires effort. The user after before coming to high prototyping. Must do a low prototyping, low prototyping or medium prototyping before coming to this because it will uh, cost time and effort. Same with this car models. These like uh, actually they, uh, the user uh, the product designer have made this. It requires time and effort to create to, to uh, conceptualize conceptualize this product as a final product. So I'll just go back. So basically, is a highly functional and interactive. They must be close to the final product. The it, it basically uh, high fi prototypes are often used in later stages to test usability and identify issues. High fidelity prototype look like software to the customers or a real life component. They allows you get to detailed feedback. It it uh, it is very costly time and resources are applied to this. So you must think on before creating any high fidelity prototype. So we can take a screenshot of this. I will not go through that. So I will give a small examples of uh, prototyping. This this is a school bag. They have created by paper. Okay, this is a very small thing that they have done, but but we can easily get an idea that how actually the bag look like. This is a small uh, handbag that they have created by using paper and small clips. So by this we can get an actual idea at what product and what how it should look, how it should be, how it should ergonomical structure, the other whether we are able to handle it or not. So by this we can easily get that. A similar with this uh, prototype of this, like Iron Man specs. If you are fan of Iron Man, we can see that these are the Iron Man specs that they have generally used. So someone has created that. Same with this, is a 3D printer prototype that what how we should use. So this is an initial prototype that they have catered to know the worthiness of the product. They are very small, small examples as we can see. So as we can see, these are all made of cardboard, paper, thermocol. And small small things, so we should not think much before creating prototyping. We just only do a uh, do an empathy study and ideation study profoundly and very cautiously and very uh, do a uh, very good study of, of empathy and uh, ideation. After that, we will definitely lead to a very good product. So, uh, also, you can use uh, various electronic circuits like Arduino boards, uh, sensors, and others to create any product. uh so i will give a small summary to you uh, i will also give a small uh, uh, exercise to you so that they, you can also work on in your home communication is very important let us discuss ideas with the stakeholders second develop requirements and or specification that what exactly they want third is that learning and problem solving must be the attitude of yours that this is actually what you want to do Evaluate interface effectiveness for communicating in conceptual model. Further develop conceptual and physical design, and save time and money. These are the very important things that you must consider before designing anything. 
so uh, just want to end this uh, slide of half an hour is already over so don't get attached to the prototype because it may be need to be thrown away so i will give a, a small exercise to all of you this is actually uh, a cardboard based elephant so you, if you don't have 3d printer use cardboard create this elephant or create some product that you must think of that the stick a cardboard layer one by one so you can easily get this type of products this is actually hands on exercise that you must do before creating or because uh, creativity is matters if you are creative you can think in that perspective it is very very important to be de designing anything so this is a small exercise that i have given uh, just you, as a homework if you want to do you can do and this is a main my, my main id if you want to send any uh, feedback or any suggestion or any questions regarding this you can easily note that and you can easily message mail me uh, thank uh, you uh, thank you sir it's truly excellent uh, input uh, and you are sharing your experience so uh, we'll take some questions sir at the end of session so will you available at the time yes yes yes, yes. yeah yeah so thank you sir thank you thank you siddhant uh, thank you for taking this session uh, i mean uh, i recall my school days when there was a set of books from ncert we used to call them gagar me sagar and similar is the situation of the presentation being given by uh, siddhant Uh, that's not all it's just a glimpse of what uh, siddhant has done he has, he's a quick doer he can do miracles and uh, that's what i have seen at least in the pandemic number 2 when the entire country was struggling with the uh, uh, in uh, this oxygen concentrators and he has developed one uh, that too at 11 lpm in a period of maybe less than 60 days so that was then disseminated to several other companies which further manufactured the same and sold the same in seven dif different states of the country so that's what uh, siddhant is let me take this story from here onwards now you have developed the prototype let me share my screen and what consist what is the learning right now if we would like to proceed ahead from there where siddhant has left what to do next now okay siddhant has done some prototypes he is suggesting the students if you do not have prototype uh, 3d printing machine then you can go ahead for a cardboard slicing and you can develop the desired prototype now what next a validation and testing is required i have some examples with me where in some problem statement were identified by, uh, by the inventors and they proceeded ahead with the prototype development further with the validation and testing sorry testing and validation now uh, in order to proceed ahead there is one very important key component that is ip where to file the ip and at what stage now the ip needs to be filed at ideation stage only as in when the uh, the stage where in siddhant was telling have you discussed this conceptualized the project at that stage the provisional patent application at least the provisional patent application must be filed now in your on your screen we have two problem statements where the solutions were given one problem statement is for small agricultural uh, land pocket uh, holders or small marginal farmers who have land pocket sizes of in bigha maybe 20000 square foot or 25000 square foot Now the problem is for seed sowing and for granular uh, granular fertilizer spreading, uh, these large farm machinery cannot access these small land pocket sizes. So one inventor has decided that he will find a solution. Then he developed a seed sowing boot. That's the problem statement and the solution. So he, the faculty member Professor Neeraj Sena from IIT Kanpur, he filed the patent application for that. the other problem statement again is in agricultural practice where in the existing model is in order to get the desired or to get the uh, uh, recommended model of fertilizer uh, one must get the soil uh, uh, testing been done unfortunately excuse me sir ha uh, sir we can see the slide uh, which is of uh, mobile phone and uh, shoe ha uh, so this is a soil testing device okay, okay. if you see uh the mobile and the uh, so okay i was about to tell about this only the, so so the problem statement was soil uh, testing is never being done because in order to send the soil samples it takes 15 days of time 
to the laboratories now the farmer is not that much educated now the inventors professor jain ke singh at iit kanpur he has developed a soil testing device that is portable very small if you you can see it on your screen and is embedded with a mobile application which can be installed in any of the mobile application any android application now using this uh, uh, soil testing device the macro uh, nutrients can be uh, tested uh, within 90 seconds of time so that was the kind of problem uh, statement and the solution which was provided now the testing has been done we got to know that uh, there are several uh, parameters which are already being standardized by the indian council for Agri uh, for agricultural research which is the main agricultural body of the country then the validation was done and the prototype was developed in consonance with the standard test by the regulatory authority so are you developing any prototype or validating in consonance with the standard existing standards being set by the agencies or not if you are going towards some medtech domain are you getting your devices regulated uh, uh, approved through the regulatory body which is following in xyz domain or not are you aware that your medical devices are falling in which category whether it is a a category class a or class b whether it is a invasive category or a non invasive category so if you are proceeding ahead ascending towards the transition from lower trl scale to higher trl scale uh, for layman people like me who do not understand what is a trl so trl is a technology readiness level scale which i will be discussing on the next page so when you are moving from ideation to product stage this entire process is called trl upscaling i have some prototypes in front of my screen you might be seeing uh, dr uh, ravindra is it visible yes yes sir so these prototypes are developed by the uh, by a team which consists of students plus faculty members on top left hand side this is a proctoscope which was developed by siddhan uh, and on the uh, bottom right hand side again it's a uh, um uh, again a prototype which has been a pottery uh, which has been developed by sidan so uh, there are several problem statements which were given by doctors so we outsourced the problem statement so we were being an engineer we were never able to understand what were the problem statements being identified by the clinicians so are we as a student or be a faculty member of a engineering domain or design expert are we trying to source the problem statement from niche domains yes or not so that is one we got to know that the relevant problem statements were not reaching to the inventors then we organized the medtech uh, 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 hackathon where we combined the uh, the team was combination of doctors plus engineers but the problem statements were coming from the doctor side only so that was the kind of problem statement that was solved and the prototypes were developed the main idea or the main usp of this entire prototype development or the hackathon was that the problem statement was sourced from somewhere else so we as a engineer can we identify the problem statements of a doctor the answer is no if you see as common problem okay let's take this one a doctor doing a surgery over patient the patient weighs somewhere on 110 kg now the sutures have been done stitching has been done now the uh, patient needs to be moved from the operation theater to the stretcher now it would require at least four ward boys or uh, uh, persons to shift the patient in you know order to do that there will be a jerk and just because of the jerk the sutures or the stitches would get disturbed so that is a problem statement which was again and again identified by the doctors out of this hackathon the solution was a uh, rotating belt based uh, retrofit model was developed by the students wherein this model can be adopted or retrofitted with any of the existing stretcher or operation ot table so that was the kind of solution but from what part the problem statement came the problem statement came from our doctors so are we considering problem statements from different domains as well so this is the point number 2 that i would like to give then in order to upscale from the ideation phase to prototype first one was in order um, you one must file the ip or the patent at the time of product uh, or uh, project conceptualization second was uh, source the problem statements from different varied domains the third is always keep a track of what you are doing how much time you are uh, spending 
आर यू स्पेंडिंग टाइम ऑन द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ अ प्रोटोटाइप दैट टू इन इंजीनियरिंग डोमेन यू ऑलरेडी टू फोर इयर्स ऑफ टाइम जस्ट फॉर द वैलिडेशन टेस्टिंग डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द टेक्नोलॉजी एंड ड्यूरिंग दैट फोर इयर्स ऑफ टाइम द टेक्नोलॉजी हैज बिकम ऑब्सोल्यूट एंड रूडिमेंट्री सो वन मस्ट कीप अ ट्रैक ऑफ टाइम प्लीज डू रिमेंबर दैट technology also has a life cycle the technology becomes obsolete and rudimentary so if you are continuously working on a technology without keeping a track of time then you may compromise on the chances of technology become a product or your technology seeing the fate of a product so uh, in front of your screen you may be seeing a trl level or scale TRL technology readiness level was invented by NASA and American Space Agency where in in order to launch the rocket they used to source components different units from different sources and it was very difficult for them to assess out which unit is at which stage is it at the deployment stage or not can it be used as a product or not so they have developed this TRL scale as a layman person i do understand that is if you are at ideation phase you are at trl1 if you have developed a point of care device or a prototype you are at trl4 if you have validated it's trl7 if you have developed a full fledged product like the one that is there in my phone uh, in my hands like a mobile phone you are at trl9 so product means trl9 idea means trl1 in between this there has to be an average time if you are taking a lot of time in order to develop then you may be compromising on the chances of your technology or the project uh, not seeing uh, the fate of a product so that is all there are different models of trl like a european model a birac model what you see right now as trl4 in this uh, scale becomes trl2 when you go in the trl of aerospace engineering so there are varied models but what i am saying is time is the key component in this entire scale so one must keep a track of that then again as and when uh, you are developing a uh, uh, a prototype and you are transitioning towards the upscaling upscaling towards the higher trl scale have you considered keeping a track of how many components have been used this is typically the model in which um, uh, industry works it is called as bill of material so this is one of the bill of material which has been uh, blurred just because of the uh, classified nature of this bill of material but in order to tell you that bill of material is very important what consists uh, uh, what uh, bill of material contains it cons uh, consists of several components the grade of components the quality of components the different uh, prices the different sources of components which are the vendors how many components are required so th this is this consists of a bill of material so as in when you are developing your prototype to product stage you one one must keep a track of all these uh, uh, components like ip filing regulatory keeping a trl uh, note of trl scale and bill of material and with all these four one can reach the stage of a uh, uh, product if not even at this bill of material or at the validation stage there may be chances wherein you say i'm a ip driven i'm a r and d driven person i do i cannot go towards the entrepreneurial route because a conglomeration of r and d conglomeration of r and d plus uh, 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 entrepreneurial mindset is a very unique uh, uh, combination so that is all from our side uh, i since the session was for one hour only i cannot take much more time it is already uh, 50 minutes so i request the participants to if they have any questions they can ask either me or siddhant we both of us are available for this yes uh, sure so participants uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, you can interact with the speaker or you can uh, write your question in chat box we'll take those questions but i have a small problem statement for all of you if you can work on uh, yes. the small problem statement that today is uh, the medicines that we purchase from the shopkeeper pharmaceutical uh, shops actually the name written and the date of expiry and the specification and the, the drug uh, percentage was written 
resulted in the whole medicine, not a single or not single one. Right. So sometimes what happens? Suppose a medical shop person has given some medicine, so details are already cut off. So we are not been able to note that what is the medicine actually that name, what is the percentage, what what is the date expired, other other things. So if right. you can formulate something that how we can package that, how we can formulate that, or how we can uh, give that same information to the major information to the user, it will be very good. So. You Thank you. Can work on that. That how we can do that. So it's very very big issue that people are sub facing today. Right, right. Rightly said, question, sir. And the problem statement actually, uh, uh, we can actually design one QR code for that. And uh, if we can, if we scan those QR code, all the information uh, can be at, available on mobile. QR code we have worked on, but it's not that worthy because don't people don't have that QR code to scan every person. Okay. So we must think of small detail about how what you can do. QR code we have selected, a clip cover we have uh, we have done the work, but it's not working. So okay. we must we must some gather some student who can do a detail analysis on that. It will be great for them. Okay. Right, right, sir. Thank you, uh, sir. We have some questions uh, from our end. Uh, in one of the slide, uh, Siddhan sir, in one of the slide you uh, shown as the alpha and beta test. Can you please uh, explain that? Uh, Sidan, you are on mute. Hello. Yes. Uh, so basically, what happens, sir? Uh, Ravi sir is also sitting here. So after high fidelity prototyping, there were two more versions uh, before going to the final market ready product. As we have already shown that TRL level. So this is the higher TRL level, basically that people has achieved higher TRL level. That is six or seven. That uh, this is actually a alpha and beta prototype that we can name down to in a, in a categorical way. So this is actually what after high fidelity, this is actually what we do it. After that, there will be a final prototype, final version. Okay, okay. Okay. I think there is one question in chat box. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, there is one question in the chat box. Like uh, when we are testing prototype, we uh, want to save cost of experiment and uh, the right time. So what we should do to minimize the number of experiment? Okay, okay, okay. Great, great, good question. So basically, if you are designing something for many people, so you must actually take an exam, you take a ratio of 1% or 2% that you must take an interview of. So it may be a time consuming, but what the output that you have will got definitely will lead to a good answer or good result. So uh, don't uh, reduce the number of number of experiment or number of size. Otherwise, you will not get actual data. So maybe it's a time consuming, but it'd be only a one time process that we must do. So I'll just suggest that don't think on time, just do a small axis on experimentation, whether it is consuming time or not, do that because it can, you can get an variable output from that. There is one more question, sir. Can you throw some light on low fidelity? Okay, uh, great. Low fidelity can be of anything. You have a pen and a paper. Suppose I want that you should draw a car for me. You should give a, give a car for me. It should look like this. It should have that seat much cover and the headlights should look like this. So what you can do, you can take a grab of paper and a pen. You can design that. This is basically considered you can low fidelity. That is how actually it will look. A second thing is that you can easily cut a, uh, a small cardboard or you can show, it, show to me this is actually what it should look this is actually what form should that the car should make with this we can consider low fidelity prototype so it should not consume much time much effort but only to give an idea to the user that this is actually what exactly they want so uh, so don't think of much complex start with the low fidelity either on a pan or a paper or a small uh, thermocore or cardboard you can just cut it out and give a small in five, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, you can create a small prototype. This can be called as low fidelity prototype. Because in this, we only need to judge the basic uh, feel of that product, but not the actual product. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, uh, we would also like to have uh, your guidance on uh, if we have the multiple ideas. So what criteria we can uh, set for to shortlist the ideas? Okay, okay. This is actually a very, very important question and, and you should almost do that. Uh, for instance, that brainstorming is very, very important. In brainstorming, if you have a team, it's very, very good. If you are working single, but try to gather at least two people because in designing and product perspective, we want different perspectives to be merged on to create a final product. 
to uh, get their ideas then the third step is that try to implement whether that the idea is possible or not so there are many approaches like chris approach that is theory of inventive public problem or brainstorming approach thought analysis there are many approaches that we must uh, do there is a detailed lecture of that we uh, uh, give but there are small small tools like swart brainstorming uh, heads on hands on and uh, take the hat off so many very small approaches that you must follow that actually uh, we must think of whether the idea that we have got whether it has the capability to go to the final product or not so get more ideas uh, the smallest thing that you can do make a mood board just stand in front of a wall take a sticky note stick as many as ideas you want then stand for 5 minutes in front of them think of the various ideas that you have evaluated and try to merge various ideas try to gather more and more information and ultimately definitely from your vigilance or your uh, thought process only you can shortlist that ideas so it's not very complex process only i take a sticky tape the smallest approach that we just people uh, use take a sticky tape add more and more ideas stick to the walls and make a small mood board to your for that actually what they want to cater and then finalize the ideas definitely you can uh, lead to a good result after this right right thank you sir okay. the next question is actually to both of you that uh, there are so many uh, centers are available uh, nowadays who, and where experts of innovation incubation entrepreneurships are there and uh, the institutes like us or any private institutes uh, will uh, definitely like to interact with you to know your expertise uh, so is there any program or is there any channel so that we can connect with you sure so sir uh, there are two uh, channels uh, there are several programs wherein we provide hand holding support to nascent or to just uh, incubation centers which have started in couple of years only so hand holding is number one number two there are several projects in which we adopt the uh, recent incubation centers okay. the third is is to organize master trainer programs for faculty members and training programs for students so that that may include a five day uh, program so short term course as well so all the all these three modalities are available uh, we have done it for regional engineering college and engineering colleges from other states we have done it at least dozens of time uh, previously so whatever modality suits you you already have my email id you can connect with me uh, 